Hey guys, Jackson Savvy here. Today's Windows 10 tutorial is going to cover the Windows 10 built-in mail app. So let's jump right into it and we'll at least get it open before we start talking about it. Go ahead and click on the bottom left hand corner on your start button and just start typing in the word mail. You should see the first result to be the trusted Windows Store app and that's the Windows 10 built-in mail app. Now I don't exactly recommend this but a lot of people do like to have some kind of mail client for their email. Uh, I prefer just to use Gmail and go directly to it. But if you've got a internet provider who you have an email through or maybe a custom domain through uh, and you don't have Outlook, you don't like Mozilla uh, Thunderbird, things like that, Windows 10 does have a built-in mail app, but it is a bit featureless as far as you can't change the amount of time that the mail stays on the server and things of that nature. But here I've got a, the Windows 10 mail app pulled up. I haven't added an account yet. And I've got a test account that we're going to do from uh, one of the places that I actually work for. And we have our own server settings um, that require authentication, but no SSL. So whatever email uh, that you might have, their settings might be different. So before you get started, kind of have them ready to go either in another window or copy and paste it like I do here. And we'll kind of talk about a few of the ins and the outs when adding a new mail uh, account to this app. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, add an account here. And it's going to give you a couple options. Now, if you have an Outlook.com account, which is uh, Microsoft's own email, you can go ahead and add that. And that's inclusive of if you got an old Live.com, Hotmail, or MSN account. Uh, if you have Office 365, you can do this, which if you had Office, I don't think you'd really like this mail app whatsoever. If you've got Gmail, Yahoo, iCloud. Now, it does say other account for Pop and IMAP. And if you'll take a look up here uh, on mine, we're going to be doing it as a Pop 3 account. Now, you'd think you could just click that and enter your settings, but the mail app built into Windows 10 will let you put those in but it's only your username and password. It doesn't pull the right settings usually. So if you've got any kind of settings that give you server ports or different incoming mail servers, things like that, go ahead and hit advanced setup to save you a little bit of time. And in my case, we're going to be doing a POP3, so I'm going to hit advanced and then internet email for POP or IMAP. First up will be your email address. So let me get my other browser window here so we can just do a little copy and pasting. And mine's going to be savvytest at amaonline.com. And your username will usually be your email address as well, unless you've got a different way to log into your email. Your password, of course, will be your password for the email account. I'll go ahead and pop mine in there. Now the account name, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, since this is for an AMA online account, I'm just going to name it AMA online or whatever you'd like. How you'd like the name to appear when you send messages. So on this one, we'll just go ahead and put Savvy. Uh, your incoming mail server. Now this is getting into the settings that your email provider should have given you for setting this up. In my case, you can see I've got this mail1.amaonline.com. And we'll copy and paste that in. Account type, uh, POP3 or IMAP4. Um, depending on the settings, it will probably be a POP3. POP3 keeps the space on the server that hosts this email down low. Because the client that you use, such as in, in this case, uh, Windows 10's built-in app, uh, it'll pull the mail from that server and it'll only leave a copy on the server for a set number of days. IMAP4, on the other hand, will mimic the mailbox, you know, from device to device. So your storage can add up real quick. So in an internet provided uh, email from like your uh, internet company, if it's got very little space, it can add up real quick. So a lot of times you'll do a POP3 account. And then you'll have your outgoing email server. In this case, I've got this SM 
tpauth.amaonline.com. I'll go ahead and copy and paste that in. Now here's the kicker guys. Uh, this isn't going to ask you at any point for server ports and you can see I've got them here. Now you're welcome to try it without entering this in and it may pull it what you did for me. But I will show you right off the bat if you need to add the server port in like on the incoming here you can see that it shows on mine I need port 110. Just for the Windows 10 built-in mail app since they won't give you a field to fill, fill in for that area just put a colon after your incoming email server and you can put the ports. Same thing with your outgoing. Put a colon afterwards and then whichever ports your instructions tell you to. And then pay close attention to whatever your settings tell you. Because on this particular one that I've got, it does tell you that it requires authentication, which is the username and password, same as the incoming mail server. And you'll notice that here it is, outgoing server requires authentication. So yes, I want that checked. Use the same username and password for sending email. Yes, I would want that checked since in this case it uses those kind of settings. Now for the SSL, you'll notice on mine, there's no SSL on incoming or outgoing. So I'll uncheck those. And just a quick recap before I go ahead and hit sign in, we'll see if it'll pull over the test messages I've done. Um, your email address, your username is usually your email address, then your password for the email. Account name can be whatever you'd like to name it. How you'd like your messages sent name was. Then your uh, server settings for incoming and outgoing. And once again, if you need specific port settings, we need a colon at the end along with the number. And then just check if it needs authentication and if you need SSL. And once again, all these settings will be found with whatever email provider you're using, whether it be with your uh, internet company like Suddenlink or Comcast or Gmail, Yahoo, they'll all have a section that tells you the settings so that you can put it into an email client such as this. Once you've got that all in there, let's go ahead and hit sign in and it'll take it just a minute. And I've got a few test messages and we'll see if it'll pull them in. You'll see it'll say nothing has arrived yet, but if you see it scrolling at the top here, you'll see that it's starting to try to pull everything in. And there we are. And guys, I did test this both ways with and without the server ports and it seemed like windows uh, the default ones it used was fine for mine so you're welcome to try that um, i've got four emails in here and my actual server where i go directly to it um, that's how many it showed to so i know it's pulling them over correctly and from here uh, i haven't dug too much deeper into here after i saw that you couldn't change the length of time to keep it on the server um, I really stopped recommending this app, but for those of you who just need an email client, you don't like going direct to your uh, email, such as gmail.com, you want one place to pull in all your accounts, this is a good little starter app. Uh, I would recommend either outlook.com or Thunderbird, something a little bit more feature rich for anything else. But you can put in, you know, email signatures. Um, there's all sorts of things about security, you know, automatic replies, quick actions, but really compared to most email clients, it's really, really weak, but it will get you up and going. And, um, you can add as many accounts as you need to just not a whole lot of control over server settings, how long it keeps messages, things like that. My guys, um, if you have any, uh, questions or whatever, just hit me up in the comments. If you need any recommendations, definitely outlook gmail by itself and doing forwarding there's a lot of options other than this but if you absolutely need something quick and easy and you've got windows 10 this is built in but as always thanks for watching uh if the video helped give me a like a subscribe and as always chive on